Navroz marks the beginning of the Persian New Year. It is an opportunity to look ahead to envisioning a better future. Today, Navroz is celebrated in Iran, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and many other countries where Ismailis and other Shia communities reside. It is through celebrations such as Navroz that diverse communities come together to rejoice, commemorate, and unite as one Ummah. Even though Navroz may be celebrated in different ways around the world, its significance remains the same. Through the primary IIS Talim curriculum, Betul Ilm students continuously build upon their own understanding of how festivals and celebrations are central to the life of a religious community. They also develop a greater appreciation of the diverse and rich cultures around us, as well as those within our Jamaat. Students explore key themes such as the diversity of expressions, celebrations as a way of bringing us happiness, and feeling a sense of belonging, and that there are various celebrations that can bring us together as one community, one Jamaat. Our Bethel Ilm students and their families have been anticipating Navroz and planning for the occasion in various ways. Let's take a look at some ways in which our Bethel Ilm families have been preparing for Navroz. Navroz is a time for reflection and a time to look back upon the year that has passed before we spring forward. Although this past year has been a challenging one for all of us, we are also grateful for the many blessings which we have in our lives. These include the love of our families, the connection with our community, and our Imam's constant guidance to continue to help us through these uncertain times. Live your faith. This guidance from Molana Hazri Mam is the core goal for young students as they progress through their religious education and life journey. We desire for our students to have comfort, confidence, and appreciation of how to live their faith in accordance with the Imam's guidance. By encouraging students to think flexibly, by connecting their learning to real issues, they are inspired to become curious, compassionate individuals with a desire to make a difference to those around them, thus leaving the world in a better place. With the tremendous dedication and commitment of our Bethel Ilam leadership, teachers, and volunteers, students have continued to be engaged with their learning during this past year. By attending Bethel Ilam, students have felt a sense of care and support and have been able to access religious education. Students have been reflecting on ways in which they can engage with their faith and how their faith has been a source of support and inspiration and furthermore where they can continue to draw strength. The occasion of Navroz presents itself with an exciting opportunity to renew ourselves, build resilience, and look to the future with optimism and hope. Navroz is a time when spring begins in many countries. It is the season of new beginnings. There is a heightened spirit to embrace this change happening all around us in nature. Bethel Ilm students and families reflected on the importance and significance of Navroz 
and the theme of renew. Part of this meant taking care of our own well-being and those around us and taking time to experience and appreciate all of Allah's creation. Indeed, Allah is al khaliq the creator of the world and of all the things in the world. Let's take a look at the many ways in which our Bethlehem students and families have been taking care of their well-being as they experience nature throughout the various seasons. During this past year, we have had to reimagine our lives and the way in which we have been used to doing things in our everyday world. Navroz is a time where we can look to the future and the blessings it will bring. Betul Ilm helps to promote resilience in our students. Betul Ilm fosters ways in which we can help build this skill in our young students from an early age. By connecting the Talim curriculum to the relevancy of their everyday life, to surrounding them with a strong support system, to enabling their voice and creativity, Betul Ilm seeks to encourage the holistic development of each and every student. As we commemorate the occasion of Navroz, we do so with hope and optimism of what the new year will bring. Navroz Mumbarak. Everybody. The story I will be talking about is called The Dervish and the Confectioner and in this story, the dervish explains that the flies that are stuck too deep in the honey cannot get back out while the flies that are less greedy and stick to the edges of the honey can return home. The flies that are too deep in the honey refer to people who are too engrossed in the material world and when it's time to go, they will have difficulty. The story connects to Navroz as Navroz is a time for newness and new ideas. And this story definitely changed my perspective on life and gave me a new one. During these difficult times, Navroz comes as a reminder of hope and rejuvenation. In Central Asian tradition, Navroz symbolizes an important time of the year to celebrate for an optimistic future. As we are studying the Quran module, it makes me reflect on Allah's words from Surah Yasin. They remind us that despite our challenges, we should always remember that Allah sustains and provides for us. I express humble gratitude to Allah for keeping my family safe and blessed during these unprecedented times. Tashakur and thank you. In BUI, we read the story called Conference of the Birds. I would like to share an excerpt from the story. It reads, My feathered friends, do not despair. I know you feel alone. But rise and cheer. We have a king. I've seen his golden throne. He waits for you, my feathered friends. Our king Simur the wise. With him you'll find a love that's true, a love that never dies. What this story meant to me was we gathered together to, to conquer the difficult challenges of the past year and move forward to new beginnings. At the end, we will rise stronger as individuals and as a community. I wish you all an Everest Moonbark. In my painting, there are colorful trees on either side of a path, and on that path is a person. That person represents us on our journey of life. In the Quran, it says, He brings the earth to life after its death. In these are signs for people who ponder and reflect. Navroz is a time when flowers bloom, a time when flowers develop their color, and it's also a time to rejuvenate, both physically and spiritually. Literature opens a window for us and gives us an opportunity to ponder on ourselves and what we are doing. Just like Navroz, a new day marks the beginning of spring that refreshes nature. Similarly, literature refreshes our life with the hope to develop a new thinking. As we're responsible for our actions on the Day of Judgment, let's pause and think about how we can grow ourselves by learning from our past and make our future right. Nafros is an occasion for me to reflect on my actions and show gratitude. In Quran Sharif, Surah Qaf, Ayat 7, Allah speaks of the beauty of earth. This year in Bayt al -Ain, we looked at the Quran as a well spring of inspiration in our lives. Navroz provides me with the opportunity to seek inspiration from the source of tradition for our lives. As trees blossom and the sun shines brighter in this special season, spring brings new hopes in our lives too. 
reminding us that all blessings, Rahmah comes only from Allah. As we navigate through the challenges of our world today, we look to the guidance of the Quran and of Hazri Imam. Through BUI, I've learned that Hazri Imam interprets the Quran based on the time and context of the Jamaat to provide a source of inspiration to help us stay on Surat al mustaqim In a speech on October 19, 2003, Hazri Imam stated, quote, The Quran is an inclusive vision of society that gives primacy to the nobility of conduct. It speaks of differences of language and color as a divine sign of mercy and important for people of knowledge to reflect upon." Unquote. As part of our tradition, we look to Hazrat Imam for guidance and assistance in times of need, and as we look towards Navroz as a new beginning, let us be hopeful and carry these messages with us. Navroz to me means a day of new beginnings and an opportunity to become better versions of ourselves. This year, my Navroz resolution is to continue practicing my faith and care for the people in my life. I can show these values by continuing to say my dua regularly and by showing acts of kindness such as helping those in need and staying connected with my loved ones. So today, take the time to think about your resolutions too. Remember to take care of yourself and others. Navroz Mubarak. Over the past year, we've had to change our way of life and in particular, the way in which we stay connected to our community. A message from Melina Hazri Mum said, These bonds of community have sustained throughout history and will continue in the difficult months ahead. In BUI this year, I learned that the Imam supports us through his interpretations of the Quran and making its message accessible to us today. In a speech given by our Imam, he said, The holy book continues to illuminate the thought and conduct of Muslims belonging to different cultural environments and different communities of interpretation from century to century. As we look forward to this upcoming year, we can continually rely on the Imam's support to keep us happy and remain hopeful during this difficult time. Sermon BUI, we are learning about life as a journey of spiritual search through examples of Muslim literature. I have compared my journey to a dry leaf. Where the leaves do get colored and feel like it is fulfilled, it must stay under the sun and be watered regularly. Only then it can live and stay connected to its roots. Once it reunites with its roots, its true colors will be back. The leaf represents me. In order for me to feel spiritually nourished, I must stay under the light, the guidance of Maulana Hadri Imam. Navroz is the reminder for me to reflect on my journey of life and renew my commitment to it. I will share with you a piece of Muslim literature that we study and that for me connects to Navroz. It is Conference of the Birds by Farid Udin Attar. This piece of literature connects to Navroz because Navroz is about new beginnings and fresh starts. Similar to the story where the birds go on a journey with their guide who both to find their creator and they soon realize that their creator was living inside of them once they let go of all the materialistic possessions, starting a fresh beginning to a new life. I am Mika Damji and I'm a member of the Encounters TED Ed program. My passion is the role of women in sports and I was curious if the Quran had any guidance to help me with my TED talk. The Quran says that we are one and surahs indicate that men and women are equal. Things get complicated when we try to understand what that means in different cultures and contexts. How does this connect to women in sports? We struggle with how we think about women and how to create change. It wasn't that long ago that women couldn't go to university or vote, but that's changed and this can too. Our theme for Navroz is hope springs eternal. My hope is that as a community, we listen to the Quran and our Imam and take action to work towards a better future. Mulana Hazri Imam in his inaugural speech on October 19, 2003 states that, quote, The holy book continues to guide and illuminate the thought and conduct of Muslims belonging to different communities of interpretation and spiritual affiliation from century to century in diverse cultural environments, unquote. Over the past 1400 years, the Quran has continued to guide and inspire Muslims all over the world. We are able to rely on the Imam of the time as the Rasukun film to help us interpret and engage with the Quran. Let us celebrate the new year by following the guidance of the Quran and our beloved Imam to get through these unprecedented times together as one Jamaat. I've been giving some thought to the idea of Navroz, which marks the start of the new year and the beginning of spring. The idea of new beginnings is central to Navroz. Comment pouvons-nous créer et saisir des occasions durant la nouvelle année? 
Comment pouvons-nous garder espoir Comment pouvons-nous rester optimistes face à l'adversité la, Comment pouvons-nous cultiver l'ouverture et la compréhension, non seulement aujourd'hui, mais à tous les jours Bien qu'il n'y ait pas un, une seule réponse à ces questions, elles suscitent une réflexion utile sur l'année qui vient de s'écouler, une réflexion qui peut nous permettre d'avancer au moment où nous accueillons le nouvel an. This is a community, like so many others, that overcame significant obstacles, and of course its members are leaders in every profession across the country today. Indeed, the story of hope and hard work is one that Canadians from all backgrounds can relate to, one that lives on in our communities and hopefully transcends our borders. While Navroz is a time of celebration and new beginnings, it also reminds us of our privilege during this time of change. As Canadians, we are fortunate to live in a country where our rights are enshrined in the Constitution, where our freedoms are entrenched in laws. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms ensures that all Canadians can speak their mind, practice their faith, and stand up for what they believe in. Because of the Charter, every Canadian is entitled to a new beginning. I want to end by sharing with you the wise words of the per Persian poet Hafiz, which I believe capture the spirit of this occasion. Spring and all its flowers now joyously break their vow of silence. It is time for celebration not for lying low. Once again, thank you for having me here today to join in this celebration. To all those who have gathered around the Hafsin table this week and are gathering in Jamat Khanas this evening, I wish you all peace, health, happiness, and prosperity in the new year. Navroz Mubarak, may peace and blessings be upon you. Many of you will remember the day when we formally opened two stunning buildings on this site, the Arkan Museum and the Ismaili Center. That was just eight months ago. We promised that we would be back in the spring to dedicate the park that joins these two buildings. Spring would be a time, we thought, when the park's natural beauty could be seen to the fullest advantage. And I have to admit that I spent much of this morning wondering whether it was going to rain or not. <laughs> well, spring is here. And here we are. And what a privilege it is to share this occasion with all of you. The garden has for many centuries served as a central element in Muslim culture. The Holy Quran itself portrays the garden as a central symbol of a spiritual ideal, a place where human creativity and divine majesty are fused, where the ingenuity of humanity and the beauty of nature are productively connected. Gardens are a place where the ephemeral meets the eternal and where the eternal meets the hand of man. The tradition of Islamic gardens places an emphasis on human stewardship 
our responsibility to nature and to protect the natural world. We see that principle expressed in the disciplined use of geomet geometric form, framing the power and mystery of nature. And of course, the garden of ancient tradition, like the garden here today, is a place where whatever difficult moments may come our way, we can always find in the flow of refreshing water a reminder of divine blessing. Welcome, bienvenue. My name is Zane Felgi, and welcome to tonight's Friday Night Reflections, and more importantly, Navroz Mubarak. We are celebrating Navroz this weekend, and tonight's program kicks off our festivities for celebration of Navroz uh, over the course of the next several days, virtually and, and you know with your families in person all across this great country. Whether you're joining us from the West Coast in beautiful British Columbia or the East Coast, or in Calgary like myself, or that dreaded place some people like called Toronto, welcome to tonight's program. And yes, of course, welcome to all of you across the world as well. We know that there's a few of you smuggling this great Canadian produced content to your shores of the United Kingdom, Asia, or you folks in the United States. While our borders might be closed, we are certainly more than happy to have you join us tonight or whenever you're viewing this program. Now, this is my fourth time hosting Friday Night Reflections. I've, of course, strong-armed the organizers into doing so. Uh, so thank you for having me back. You might notice I'm not sitting in front of my standard clearance-priced HomeSense painting, and you are correct. Uh, there's a reason for that, although I should mention there are some relics of past episodes. If you look behind me, there's the elephant, also known as the elephant in the room. Uh, but you will notice I'm not in front of that painting. You might be asking yourself why. Well, the reason is very simple. Tonight, I'll be interviewing President Amir Ali Qasim Laka. Now, if you know President Qasim Laka, not only does he have very inspirational, heartfelt remarks, he also has an excellent room. So, to compete with him, I am sitting in a different part of my house. In fact, this is not even my house. Uh, I am sitting in a corner of an Ikea while everyone eats $1 yogurt. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, perhaps illegal, but we'll see if I get kicked out. Only a matter of time. Now, tonight's theme is Navroz which means tonight we will start with my interview with President Amir Ali Qasim Laka for a discussion on the reflections of 2020, what this pandemic year meant to us, what it should mean to the Jamaat going forward, and also talk to him on a lighthearted note about his life. You know, this has been a year for a president who probably didn't expect to address the Jamaat weekly over YouTube and Friday Night Reflections, what this year taught him as a leader, what this year taught him about the strength and the opportunity presented within our Jamaat. From there, we'll learn how to prepare some snacks for this weekend's celebrations, including the always popular sherbet and haft mewa, an Afghan dish made specifically for Navroz. So yes, indeed, more carbs, just in case you haven't gained your 19 pounds for COVID-19. Although we sit at year 2021, I can't imagine we're already there. We'll also be treated to a recitation of the poem Spring, written by Jalaluddin Rumi. We'll hear from our beloved headquarters, Mukis, Mukanis, Kamyas, and Kamyanis, representing all of our Muki, Kamya, and Mukani, Kamrani across the country. And then we'll conclude with some special musical expressions specifically made for this Navros occasion. But without further ado, here is my interview with President Amirli Qasim Laka. President Saib, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. You know, I want to jump right into it. We're sitting here in March of 2021. Take me back to March of last year. You know, we were talking about the coronavirus. We hadn't even had the term COVID-19 in our communal lexicon, so to speak. Canada had just declared that we were closing our borders. We, we, as an international community, had just called this a pandemic. As a leader of our Jamaat here in Canada, what was the first thought that, that went through your mind when you heard about what was coming uh, and what was on our doorstep as, as a country, but also as a community? 
You know, uh, Zane, it kind of takes me back to the beginning of last year in, in early January. Uh, we made a decision uh, that, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a, a possibility that the risk to Canada would escalate, the risk to Jamaat would escalate. And so uh, very uh, kind of early on in the year, we decided that uh, we wanted to put a small team together that would be able to provide some leadership and think issues through so that uh, the Jamaat was, was prepared. And, and we were concerned primarily from a health perspective. And so uh, very early in the year, we established a task force to uh, just uh, uh, you know, stay ahead and, and think issues through and prepare just in case. Uh, fast forward to March, the time that we closed the Jamaat Kanas. And I remember that date very, very clearly. It was March the 10th. It was etched in my, it's etched in my mind. You know, in the week leading up, to the closure of Jamaat Kanaz. I, I would say that was perhaps the most difficult period because uh, the weight of the decision that we had to make uh, in terms of closing Jamaat Kanaz, uh, you know, this is something that has not happened in our generation. And it was, it was something that was going to be so impactful on the Jamaat. And, you know, as, as a set of leaders, we wanted to make sure that we did not uh, make this decision prematurely in a, in a hurried way but in a consultative way and of course with guidance and it was a tough decision i will never forget it was a very tough period for us as leadership it was an even tougher period for the jamaat yeah you know i, I want to double click on that 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 week and that date a little bit more if it's okay with you because you know right now in retrospect it seems like the decision to close jamaat kind of was a no brainer. We saw this pandemic rage on a year. We saw that it was actually, in fact, global. You know, the toll it's taken on lives and livelihoods. It seemed like an obvious choice. But in that moment in time, you were dealing with such a vacuum of both information and uh, criteria and how to kind of make this, this decision. What did that teach you about two things? And maybe I'll start with the first. What did that teach you about leadership? What did that teach you about your capacity for, for leadership uh, in, that, in that moment in time if we double click on that particular uh, time period? You know, uh, what it taught me, Zane, is that it's very important uh, to be surrounded by subject matter experts and, and to consult with them uh, on, a, on, a, on a very, very uh, regular basis, but on a very meaningful basis when you have to make such difficult decisions. And, and I have to tell you that, uh, you know, in that particular period, the, the importance of, of uh, consultation as, as a leader so that, you know, we were making an informed choice uh, uh, as kind of a set of decisions that we could justify in our own minds, but justify to the Jamaat and, and ultimately justify, uh, you know, through time. It, it, was, it, was, it was very, very difficult and it really tested uh, our, our capacities and our resilience because when you've never experienced and seen something like that uh, in your lifetime, where you've taken Jamaat Kana and going to Jamaat Kana as a, as a given, that Jamaat Khanna doors are open for you every day, every morning, every evening, and to suddenly make a decision to, uh, to temporarily close down Jamaat Khanna's, those things really weighed heavily on our minds. And I have to say that uh, it was, it was uh, the, the, the team decisions and the team uh, kind of consensus and ultimately the guidance that we received uh, that, that really helped us carry through those decisions and those, those processes. You know, as we as I talk about double clicking on that particular week, you know, that's the leadership that's the leadership lesson. It also probably taught you something about the Jamaat because here's what I want to kind of I want to read you a list very quickly if it's okay, right? Yeah. This I'm reading you the list for we launched the access line, we launched digital programming including Friday night reflections, we launched Ismaili TV. This is in a matter of mere weeks and months, and there's a phrase and I know I'm going to butcher it, so but I'll try anyways. It's never stopped me that often you can get years worth of work done in weeks and often it takes uh, you know a significantly longer amount of time uh, to to get just weeks of work done. And this really seems to be the former, that we got so much done off the ground as a Jamaat. What did that teach you about not just the resiliency of our institutions, but what did that teach you about our Jamaat in that, in that moment in time, in those early days of, of, of this pandemic? Well, you know, Zain, it speaks to uh, the expression uh, that's often used, necessity is the mother of invention. But what really uh, we saw in action in, in, in those first few weeks 
was the Jamaat's volunteer spirit. You know, we had been thinking about establishing the access lines for several months. Um, and, you know, we'd been thinking about, you know, the digital platforms that are available to the Jamaat. How do we broaden their reach? How do we deepen their reach, etc.? And, you know, they were able to do things within a within matter of days and weeks, like you said, that would have otherwise taken us months. It speaks to the deep commitment that our, our Jamaat has to, uh, you know, to service, to service to the Imam at the time and to service to the Jamaat. You know, I do want to talk about that future state, what this means for the Jamaat. But before I do that, how have we fared as a Jamaat over the past 12 months or so? You know, what's your assessment been as, as a Jamaat, how we've, you know, how, how well have we stuck together? How well have we supported one another? You know, what's your take on that? And if there's any anecdotes to kind of share or kind of exemplify that, would love to hear those as well. I, I think, Zain, it's been a very difficult year for the Jamaat. But the Jamaat has been very courageous, very resilient. And I can tell you that as leadership, we deeply admire the Jamaat's patience, their understanding, especially through these phases of Jamaat kind of closure and reopening and closure again. The, these things are not easy, but we see light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, today, when we think about it, you know, vaccinations are underway and a significant portion of our Jamaat will, inshallah, be immunized within a couple of months. So I think that, you know, uh, the Jamaat's, Jamaat's understanding, you know, there have been such few complaints from the Jamaat about the reopening process and, you know, uh, their experience when they return to Jamaat Khanas and the closures again. Jamaat has, has shown a lot of gratitude, a lot of understanding, a lot of patience, and we recognize that. You know, what, what lessons do you think this has kind of taught us as a community? And maybe I'll use that as both the Smiley community, but even more broader as a, as a leader uh, more broadly. What lessons do you think this has kind of taught us looking back in the, in the year that was? And, you know, it's hard to comment in, on history while you're living it because we still are in many ways. This thing is not over. But if you were to kind of give me your, your preemptive or initial take on what lessons we've learned or what lessons we should be learning, what would they be in your mind? So, you know, Zane, a couple of things come to mind as, as we kind of look back and, and uh, distill what the key lessons are. I, I think the first is uh, the importance of family unity. Being there for one another is critical at all times, but more so in a crisis. You know, families provide strength to face adversity. And, and it, it's so important to nurture that unity at all times. I think this is, this is kind of one of the first key takeaways, and it applies to any community. Second is the importance of community. You know, we as a community are very strong. Alhamdulillah, you know, we make sacrifices for one another, and, and we derive so much happiness in making those sacrifices for the Jamaat. And it puts us in a very a privileged position, more so than we realize. A lot of people don't fully realize how fortunate we are as a Jamaat because of the support structures we have, the volunteers that we have, and, and the selfless work that the volunteers carry out. So I would say that uh, the value of community is, is definitely a second lesson. And, and then third, I would say, is, is our faith. And you know, our faith can carry us through our, any adversity. We are so fortunate to have Hazimam's guidance. He has been throughout the pandemic providing us with so much guidance, blessings. Every couple of weeks, months, Hazimam has provided a message to the Jamaat globally. These things give us confidence. They give us the, the strength that we will come out of this crisis stronger, more positive. So I think these are, these are I, I would distill it to these three lessons. It's the importance of family unity, community, and faith. Tell me about a, a bit as we look into the future, you know, uh, what are some of the trends you see coming up that, that COVID has perhaps accelerated in some ways, if I can say, perhaps has catalyzed uh, in, in a certain degree? And, and I'd maybe even like to get your classification as to what you think are trends that might be short-lived and what you think COVID has done to produce net new realities for us going forward. Well, look, the first thing, uh, Zane, is that I, I think a world of opportunity will belong to those who see what's on the horizon and capitalize on it. And, and that's why it's important to understand the trends. Uh, the pandemic has accelerated trends in e-commerce, in telehealth, in uh, online education. 
you know, 80% of uh, post-secondary programs today are available online. Uh, you know, it is now estimated that 25% more workers will need to change their occupations due to digital disruption relative to when the pandemic started. So, you know, these are important things for all of us to, to take into account and keep in mind as we think about our, our individual futures. But if we look at specific trends that I think the community as a whole uh, needs to be uh, aware of, which, which the general public recognizes the experts keep talking about, is that, first of all, uh, remote work and virtual meetings, uh, these things will become the norm. They're going to be part of the way in which business is conducted. And then I think uh, uh, the second kind of very important thing to recognize because it's going to impact on jobs, on employment, is the increased use of robotics and automation. You know, the reality is that the future of work as a result of the pandemic has arrived much faster. And, and I think uh, the third kind of trend is, is that, you know, the mix of occupations is going to shift towards more forward-looking technologies. Again, uh, we've been speaking about that for such a long time, but these are realities that we have to face. And, and I think a fourth thing to highlight is that shopping behaviors uh, that have emerged through the pandemic are going to remain. And I bring that, that up in particular because a lot of the Jamaat is, uh, is focused, for example, on the retail industry and, and needs to be aware of what the implications are going to be. So, you know, the Jamaat uh, has, has to think about these things, remain ahead of the curve, and, and plan for some of these trends that we're going to have to adjust to. You know, I, let's talk a little bit about what our post-pandemic sort of mindset looks like. You know, we've discussed many things around ex certain accelerations that we're going to see professionally. If you were to kind of give the Jamaat advice uh, on the mindset that they need to equip themselves with, you know, albeit the caveat that we're still living in this history that is, what would you tell them? I would say to the Jamaat that we should not think that change is over and that the world will return to what it was before the pandemic. There is need for creative and flexible thinking to address future problems. And uh, those people who demonstrate those uh, innate qualities will find it easier to identify opportunities and address the challenges that lie ahead. I think uh, opportunities will be available to those who are deliberate and who take action. Uh, we need to position our families. We need to position our children in the best way possible, and we need to be anticipatory. I think that's the mindset that's required moving forward from here. You know, you, you've, you've listed quite a few things there. I want to kind of try to tease a few of them out, but maybe I'll try to get personal for a second, which is, you know, that, that change is, is always uh, constant, you know, and in paraphrasing your point here, that going forward, it's going to be an, uh, an undue reality in terms of what we face. What's something that's kind of changed for you? Like maybe an assumption that you've held going into the pandemic. Was there any change that you took from either a strongly held conviction of how to do things or the way things were done to maybe having this pandemic exposed otherwise? You know, I, I think in terms of, uh, you know, the Jamati work itself, uh, if I can use that particular example, and how the Jamaati institutions have, have uh, operated in terms of uh, the ways of engaging with one another, all the volunteers, etc. And you know, in the, in the early months of the pandemic, there was this kind of strong desire to see, uh, you know, life go back to normal and that, you know, we have those, uh, those kind of uh, very uh, close interactions amongst all the volunteers, uh, amongst the leadership, etc. And, and having that personal contact. But you know, when I'm, and I'm using this as an example, as time has gone by, and I'm looking at the efficiencies that have emerged through pandemic, you know, how, how uh, people have just uh, embraced the technologies that are available and embrace the efficiencies that come with it, I, I'm beginning to realize that, you know, things are not going to go back to the historic ways of doing things, that, you know, connectivity is, is available in different ways. We just have to embrace it make it work for us and, and recognize that, that uh, some things will just, will just change, even in the way in which the institutions and the Jamaat operates. So I think that, um, 
you know, uh, that, I mean, that's, I'm giving you one example, uh, but I'm looking at it from the perspective of how the communal institutions operate. You know, I, I want to talk, uh, go back to the, the COVID mindset for a second for the Jamaat. I think you've laid out some really good instructions for what that mindset is, your, your bullet points. I'm, I'm perhaps going to ask you a slightly harder question, which is how? How do you get the Jamaat to embrace this? You know, you're talking about the, uh, the fact that many of us might be anxious to get back to normal, that, that we're almost going to try to will the world to go back where it isn't convenient, uh, will the world to go back to a way that it was because that's the rut and that's the lane we're used to playing in. Do you have any advice for the Jamaat as to, you know, yes, we know what the mindset needs to be, but how to get there? Zain, I would say that some things are just going to happen naturally. You know, things with respect to day-to-day -day life, family life, things that people have to, uh, you know, contend with in terms of their, their personal, uh, you know, decisions that are not necessarily career-related or education-related or business-related, you know, things like shopping behaviors, etc. People will figure those things out. And if, if there is a change, people will, over a period of time, adjust to it, they will, they will embrace it over a period of time. What worries me is the economic implications. What concerns me is that if people are displaced, they lose their jobs because there's pressure on that particular job category. Their business is at risk because they come under pressure in that particular industry. And they don't think hard and quickly enough and prepare and invest in retooling, that worries us. So I think we have to separate economic matters from other matters. And I'm specifically highlighting economic matters because we want the Jamaat to remain ahead of the curve. We want the Jamaat to move ahead of the curve and really think these issues through and be prepared. Now is the time. Uh, you know, uh, we, we have you know, had this opportunity of, let's call it downtime, for several months. And at the same time, you know, uh, 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 academic institutions at the post-secondary level have, have offered their programs in the digital spaces. Over 80% of post-secondary programs are available today uh, online. And, and this is an opportunity for the Jamaat, and the Jamaat has to see it and take advantage of it. We keep repeating uh, the, the, these particular opportunities for the Jamaat and identifying programs that the Jamaat can access but, but they really are something that we have to address immediately as a community. You know, I, I, I really appreciate that because I think it really tries to distinguish between, you know, things that will just happen to us, whether we want to embrace it or not, versus things we have to harness that if we actually outright uh, take action on, we can be on the upside and the upswing of. One of the most interesting stats of this pandemic, and I'm sure you've heard it too, was the, the amount of income inequality that it caused. That for the top 10%, and if not the top 1%, this was the best time of their life. They were living their best life in this pandemic because commute times went down, technology made business travel less necessary, and they were still having cash flow and income come in. And for, for the remainder of the population, um, it was a little bit tougher. It was, it was a, a much more difficult life. And I think what you're saying is that the oxygenation of certain opportunities post-pandemic will be available. It's just whether we want to choose to, to get them or not. I'm going to shift gears a bit uh, to, to this conversation, to be a little meta, because uh, the Jamaat is really familiar with you. Uh, and they're really familiar with you because for so many episodes of Friday Night Reflections, I'd say I think the first 30 or so, you were on every single week talking to us directly to thousands of people. And I've got two questions. The first one is, did you think that's that what your presidency would look like, would be giving you know, outright uh, statements every single week and, and heartfelt messages um, to the Jamaat every single week? And, and, and kind of what kind of spurred that? And secondly, you know, why did you continue doing it? Because uh, I'd say that you know, to your earlier point about reaching thousands of people at a time, uh, the Jamaat is intimately familiar with who you are simply because we've seen you week in and, and week out. So kind of take me through that exercise and kind of why you went down that track of speaking to us each week through our you know, television screens, laptops, and, and, and phones. You know, Zane, I, I'll tell you, uh, there were many things that were going through uh, our minds and my mind in particular. Uh, we wanted to be available for the Jamaat. Uh, we wanted the Jamaat to know that the Jamaati institutions are here to support them. Uh, we wanted the Jamaat, first of all, to be connected. 
And you know, uh, the reason uh, we co I, I continue to speak week after week is because there were certain priorities that, uh, you know, as leadership based on the guidance of Molana Hazrima have been identified for the Jamaat, for the Canadian Jamaat. And we felt that it was an important uh, occasion and opportunity to share with the Jamaat, to express the priorities uh, that we were seeing and how we were considering these priorities. And the fact that the Jamaat was very receptive, was very responsive, uh, we wanted to avail that opportunity. And, and, but most importantly, we wanted to make sure that uh, the Jamaat did not feel isolated uh, in, in their thinking and, and become isolated. We were worrying all the time about every segment of the Jamaat. You know, those we were reaching through the access lines, those we were not able to reach through access lines, you know, through the different programming that, that kind of came on stream, we were constantly thinking about uh, which segment are we reaching? Which one are we not reaching? But we wanted to be there for everyone. And, and I took it upon myself personally to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, we utilize that particular platform to, to reach out to as, mu as widely as possible. I, I want to say to you, uh, Zain, that the Jamaati institutions want nothing more than for the Jamaat to succeed. We want to support them in achieving their goals. And, and, you know, uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, you know, we started a, a new mini-series uh, talking to the Jamaat and, and we, we call the series, you know, From the Heart. And, and, and I tell you why, why uh, we made the decision to, to communicate to, to the Jamaat about, uh, about the soft skills that are necessary in order to emerge from COVID. You know, I spoke to the Jamaat again about resilience, uh, networking, mentoring, uh, agency, humility and how these will be key differentiators coming out of COVID. Here's what um, our motivation was. We wanted to share the importance of these qualities with our youth early in their careers. You know, sometimes it can take years, decades, a lifetime to figure out the importance of qualities such as humility and, and networking and resilience. And, and you know, we, we want to give everybody a, a jump start. We want people to succeed. We don't want them to take years to figure out how critical some of these soft skills, these qualities are to make progress in business, uh, in career, in, in the workplace, etc. So, you know, we've come from, from uh, a genuine, a place of genuine desire to really support the Jamaat. And, and that's why, you know, we have been speaking about, about all these varied topics over the, over the past 12 months. You know, for me, I have to add the additional reason or the exciting reason to watch you every single week has not just been your words because they've been great, but I love to see which room you're coming to us from. Uh, and in fact, I have, I have remodeled my entire house for this interview. Uh, I know oh that you gosh. fight fire with fire. I don't have... <laughs> I didn't know we would have that, that significant an impact. <laughs> well, I have, I have the letter Z from winners. That's the best I could do. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> You know, President Saib, I want to ask you to close off any final words of wisdom. But before you do that, you're not off the hook so easily. I want to do a quick lightning round, some, some quick questions for you. Are, you. are you game to play with me? Sure. Okay. My first question is your, your biggest lesson that you've learned this year. Uh, the importance of consensus decision making and uh, consulting experts. It's very important to be kept well informed uh, through the opinions of others. You have got to be a good listener. That's an excellent answer. Uh, I know you're a Torontonian. Will the Toronto Raptors make the playoffs? Yes. <laughs> very, very presidential diplomatic answer. I like that there. Uh, last couple of questions. What book are you reading now? Anything interesting that you're reading? Uh, the, you know what? I, I've actually reread uh, Justice and Remembrance. I've read it before by, by Reza Shah Kazemi. And every time I read it, I... I, I derive so much uh, more from it, uh, and, and it really kind of helps put uh, you know, everything that we're experiencing through this pandemic in perspective. Another great answer. Okay, final two questions for you. Um, what's your Navarro's tradition? You know, we are celebrating Navarro's with this, uh, this week's episode of Friday Night Reflections. Do you and your family have a Navarro's tradition that you, that you generally uh, go through? Biryani, that's a constant. Fantastic. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier on the program that uh, I tried to make some biryani uh, and it was a miserable failure. So I'm glad it is biryani from a trusted vendor, if not making it yourself. President Saib, the last question I want to leave you with or ask you is, 
what wisdom do you have for us going forward? You know, we just, we, I think we, we took a pretty nice drive through the year that was March to March in many ways. We kind of talked a bit about the future. Anything you want to leave us with? Any high level thoughts you want to, you want to part us with? Sure. Well, look, there's, there's a couple of things I want to bring up. First is, I want to say to Jamaat, prepare for the future. There's no point in preparing for careers and businesses that will decline. Continuing education is more important now than ever before. But I want to say to the Jamaat, the Jamaat institutions are here to support every step of the way. I want to thank our volunteers who have been outstanding. Without them, everything that has been achieved to support the Jamaat, our efforts, would not have been possible. And, and I do want to wish the Jamaat Navroz Mubarak and our most sincere prayers for the Jamaat's happiness, their success, and barakat. I mean, thank you so much, President Saim. Navroz Mubarak to you too. Thank you for taking the time to go through this conversation, to kind of do a little bit of a retrospective that, uh, of the year, but also look at, uh, at the future in terms of both the opportunities and the challenges and how to harness them. So thank you so much for your time and really appreciate the conversation. Thank you, President Kasimlaka, for that fantastic conversation. You know, I learned a lot about not just what you see for us as a Jamaat, but what this year was like for you, having to lead in such unprecedented and unpredictable times. So thank you for, for sharing those stories, for sharing those anecdotes, and for sharing what the future in your mind looks like for us uh, individually and together as a Jamaat. You know, for many of us, this time of year means one thing, Holiday specials, that's right, I'm talking about holiday specials like Home Alone for Christmas or something else for every other holiday. But you can now add one more type of special, that's right, Navroz specials. Thanks to Ismaili.tv, we actually have original content for you. Just like Netflix, cancel your subscription. Just like Crave, cancel that too. Apple TV, gone. Amazon Prime, gone. Because all you need this weekend is Ismaili.tv. That's right, we have got three specials specific to Navroz that are airing. Let me read them out to you because these are pretty interesting. The first one that we have is called Hafiz and the Half Scene Adventure, airing on the Smiley TV tomorrow. This is an animated children's program, so make sure to check that out. Also airing tomorrow, Pebbles and Penguins, a recollection of life from Navroz 2020, all the way down to Navroz 2021 through music and poetry. And also on Sunday evening is the Ismaili TV premiere of Hope Springs Eternal, exploring the meaning and history of Navroz and touching on the many ways the festival is celebrated across the world alongside the significance of the half scene. So, like I said, cancel those subscriptions, maybe just for the weekend, but cancel those subscriptions on Netflix, on Crave, on Amazon, because we've got the Ismaili TV that has you covered. Speaking of having you covered, you might be thinking, okay, I've got the Friday Night Reflections done. I've got this special content, the original content done. What else do you need? Of course, so you know the answer. It's food. Well, to celebrate the Kushali and Navroz cuisine, we have got that covered for you too. Take a look at some, some of the Navroz recipes. Hello, Yali Mada. Bienvenue, a uh, cooking in quarantine special, Navroz edition. Let's welcome our chef, Nimira Trania. Yali Mada. Yali How are you doing today? Well, thank you. Wonderful. So, our Jamaat has been saying they're really missing our sherbet that they get at the Dandias and Kushalis. Can you tell me a little bit about sherbet? It's uh, mainly a milky drink, three different types of milk in there. It's a celebratory drink mm -hmm. that we make for occasions like Kushali, weddings, uh, even announcements by the Narani family. So, we drink it a lot. In, for our Jamaat celebrations. Perfect, and what are the ingredients we have in here? We have condensed milk, we have carnation milk, and then we have strawberry syrup, we have 2% milk, we have Chapman's ice cream, there is ice, and there's a few optional ingredients like cream soda. Okay, where do we start? We start with the lighter milks, the carnation milk. Okay. We need three and a half containers of this. Okay. And we use the milk. We use one liter of milk. You can use homogenized if you prefer a thicker drink, but uh, we use we use opted to use two percent. Okay, and what's next? And then we use condensed milk. Now in this one, it calls for three quarter of the condensed milk. So should I we measure it? No, we just go outside. Oh, okay. And but we're going to use half because that's what I prefer in this cup. I think that's half. 
<laughs> okay. And then we can use a teaspoon of this, which is vanilla essence. A teaspoon of vanilla essence, okay. Yes. And that is also optional, we don't have to use that. So it's kind of to taste. Yes, to taste. And we use half a cup of this syrup. This is Whoa, strawberry syrup. Oh, strawberry syrup. Yes, you can also adjust if you like by taste to add or reduce. And then you can use, yes, the. And all, now, we, now that the carnation milk is, the condensed milk is in there, we need to keep stirring so that it blends in properly. Okay. You use 500 ml of the cream soda, that is also optional. If you don't like to mix milk and soda, that's fine. It's a, it's a, and then we add in the ice cream. And can this just be added anytime or do we just, we yes. need to add this right before serving? A little no, we while can before. add it now because we can use the ice to use, choose to add at the end before we serve. If we add the ice cream too late, it doesn't melt and the ice cream will then, then the sherbet doesn't taste the same. Now and how much ice cream are we putting? One liter of ice cream, so it's half of the two liter box. Okay. And ice cream we have to put in early, so you need to put the sherbet, make the sherbet a little bit early if you want to serve. Otherwise, oh the, yeah, see, I see it's a big chunk in. there. We have to melt, okay? Yes, it has to melt, so we need to put this in and let it stick. So these are the special ingredients that makes it very yummy, but we can't have in Jamaicana. Yes, because we are trying, we are making it nut free. But if we want it for, for taste, if you're making it for personal drinking at home, okay, then you can add on the nuts if you want. So this is the stuff I like from back home. They have some yes. almonds there. Yes. And what's this? This is called takmaria or these are sweet basil seeds. And what you do is you soak a cup of a, a tablespoon of takmaria in a cup of water, and the end the end the result is this. Oh yeah, that's that googly stuff I see in the yes, sherbet and sometimes. The nuts can be almonds or pistachios. We can crush them. We can leave them sort of less liver better to taste. Okay, that's just it into this. And then when you're ready to serve it to the Jamaat or to the family, then just half an hour before you serve, you add on the ice so it remains nice. So just cold. a little bit before we serve, yes. the ice cream is melted, we kept mixing it. Oh, for mixing, I have this very special tool I was told to use. This is what Ottawa Jamaat uses to mix. Yes. Is, I mix with this now? No, this is what we use for a thousand people in Limran. For today, we'll make do with this. <laughs> and then how many people is this recipe for? This is for 25 people. We tweak the recipe for to thousand to cut it down to 25 people. Thank you for joining us on this Nubro's edition of Cooking in Quarantine. Make sure you stay positive, test negative, get your vaccines, and Nubro's Mubarak. Hello, Yali Madat. My name is Armina. I want to virtually welcome you to my kitchen. Navroz Mubarak to all of you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make half mewa, which is a traditional serving at Navroz in all Afghan families. Um, half mewa means, uh, it literally means half, it's seven, and mewa fruit. So we take seven dried fruit and we actually uh, mix them together and we make like a fruit salad. So I have some, um, I have the ingredients ready for you. What we have to do is uh, before we actually start mixing them together, there is a pre-preparation that we need to do a day or two before we actually start mixing them. And the mixing has to happen uh, a day or before actually Navro's day. So that means maybe on the 19th or the 20th, you would have to start mixing them together. But before that, the preparation involves as we have almond that we need to do the peeling, the, uh, the walnut that needs some peeling, and the rest and pistachio as well. So I have them all ready for you now, um, and we will just start mixing them together. I have some water already in my, uh, uh, in my pot here. Uh, it's a bit of water but with maybe a couple or three cardamoms and uh, what we do is now we start mixing them together. So of course it's Navroz and it's a time of renewal and a time of forgiveness and time of uh, starting everything fresh again. 
So that involves whoever is mixing this uh, haft mewa will have to do a quick prayer for uh, well-being and forgiveness and renewal of everything for everyone in that family. So whoever is mixing that, the responsibility actually falls on that individual to do the prayer for everyone. So pretend that I already did my prayers and I'm going to start mixing them. So I'll start with green raisins. Green raisins, bismillah. I have, as you see, almonds already peeled. I have apricot here, already washed and ready to go. I have walnut here, already washed and peeled. We have black raisins or red raisins. And I have pistachio ready to go. This is silverberry, which is very unusual to find, but we find them at all Afghan and Iranian store around Novros. So now that we mix and put them all together in this jar, I have um, filtered water that I'm going to mix it here. Just take your spoon and mix them together. Now this one, we will have to keep them in a cold temperature for about 24, maybe 48 hours uh, before it's ready for Navroz and for serving uh, your guests and families. So this is now going to go in the fridge, um, definitely in a pot maybe that you can cover and put it in a cold temperature for 24 to 48 hours for Navroz. And I'm going to quickly now show you once it is ready to serve uh, or to be served. Hello and welcome back again. Uh, so this is 24 hours after we actually mixed our dried food, fruit to make the half mewa. So again, a warning that this is uh, um, a serving with a lot of nuts. So please be mindful of whoever has nuts allergy. So now our half mewa is ready to be served. Uh, normally, if you have a lot of family and friends gathering, uh, then you can maybe um, put them first in a bigger jar like this, and then from that you can serve as uh, they um, wish. So we have here um, our servings ready, and this is how you will just pull it out. And, and maybe just go deep to get some raisins because the raisins normally go and swim down. Now we have them ready and ready to serve it to our friends and families. I hope that gives you a good insight of how to make half mewa. For those who normally make it then it's easy but for those who are trying it for first time this year give it a try and hope you enjoy that. And with that, from all of us and our families to all of you and your families and friends, Navroz Mubarak, may you have a wonderful year ahead. Thank you. Yalimadad. Okay, so after watching that, I have to say I am removing myself, renouncing the title as the self-anointed Dave Chang of my household. There might be two of you that get that joke or get that reference. You know what? I'm fine with that. Uh, after watching what those individuals have done, I've realized I don't know how to cook. Uh, in fact, I don't need a further proof point than last Kushali when my wife and I tried to cook uh, biryani at home. We rejected our parents' offers to drop some off. Uh, instead, we, we overcooked the meat and overseasoned the rice, and uh, it turned out not so great. But you know what? At least we got Instagram photos about it. And at the end of the day, isn't, all, isn't that all that matters? I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, please don't come to my house. Not only will you not get fed, not only do I not know how to cook, uh, I may not even be in my house right now because as I mentioned, I'm in an abandoned corner of Ikea. Uh, to save myself spiraling from this joke getting even worse, let me talk to you about our next item on tonight's Friday Night Reflections. 
And that's a poem. That's a poem by Jalaluddin Rumi called Spring, talking about the, the, the trampoline, the refresher that is this time of year. So for your pleasure, recite it in Farsi and English, a poem by Jalaluddin Rumi. Here is Spring. Pause, bin afsharasid, jane besusand باز به نفش رسید جان به سوسند و تا باز گل لال پوش می بتراند قبا Again the violet bows to the lily Again the rose is tearing off her gown باز رسیدن شاد زان سوی آلم چوباد مست و خرامان و خوش سبز قبایان ما The green ones have come from another world Tipsy like the breeze up to some new foolishness. Sumbula pa yasemin gaft salamu alaik. Gaft alaik as salam. Dar chamana ay fetha. The high synth speaks formally to the jasmine. Peace be with you and peace to you, lad. Come walk with me in this meadow. Puncha chumasturiyan. کرده روخ خود نهان باد کشد چادرش کای سر رو برگشا The bud is shy but the wind removes her veil suddenly My friend یا در این کوی ما آب در این چوی ما زینت نیلوفری تشنه و زردی چرا The friend is here like the water in the stream like a lotus on the water هر کسی در ماجرا چشمه که زد سبز را سبز سخن فهم کرد گفت که فرمان تو را The narcissus winks at the wisteria whenever you say گفت قرنفل ببید من ز تو دارم امید گفت از ابخانم خلوت توست و سلا And the clove to the willow You are the one I hope for. The willow replies, Consider these chambers of mine yours. Welcome. Say, begoftai turanj, as che turanj idai. Goft, man as chashme bat me neshawam khud nama. The apple, orange, why the frown? So that those who mean harm will not see my beauty. Fakht ba ku ku, amad kan yar ku. The ring dove comes asking, Where, where is my friend? With one note, the nightingale indicates the rose. Many things must be left unsaid because it's late. But whatever conversations we haven't had tonight, we'll have tomorrow. What an incredibly moving piece. You know, I know many of us have been missing the faces and the voices of our Muki Karmias and Mukani Karmianis in Jamaat Kana. So to introduce our next segment and to talk to us a little bit more about how she celebrates Navroz herself, I want to hand it off to our correspondent, Medina, over to you. Thank you so much, Zain. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here today. Navroz Mubarak to all of you from the land of sunshine and greenery, cherry blossom trees and delicious tea. It's just the introduction you get to have when you live in beautiful Victoria. It's been an exciting weekend for my family and I. My mother went out yesterday to get dried nuts to prepare for haft mewa. Haft mewa is a traditional dish which consists of seven different types of dried nuts and fruits and it's a dish that is typically prepared for Navroz. For us, it's been a family tradition of many years to take haft mewa to morning Jamaat Khana and commemorate Navroz with everyone there. We also wear Afghani attire on Navroz Day and we have family and friends over for some chit chat, which typically turns into a haft mewa eating contest. But nonetheless, uh, it is a day where we have lots of fun being in company of each other. I know that for many of us, Navro celebration will look different this year. 
Although we can't have family and friends over to celebrate, my family and I still make it a point to dress up like I have done here, prepare delicious half mewa, and have a blast during our virtual hangouts. So I really hope that you will also take this opportunity to gather with your family and friends, of course virtually, uh, to celebrate and wholeheartedly welcome the, signic the significance of Navroz, which is New Day. As you know, a number of Jamaat Khana have recently been opened on limited capacity basis in parts of the country where circumstances still permit. That still means that, of course, uh, many of us will not be able to attend Jamaat Khana to commemorate Navroz. So, on your behalf, we have asked our headquarters, Muki Kamriya and Mukiani Kamriyani Sahibas to uh, reflect on what kind of year it has been and to bring special Navroz greetings on behalf of all of our Muki Kamriya and Mukiani Kamriyani across Canada. I really hope that you enjoy it. The hardest part of the past year has been not being able to see all the Jamaat in person. Something that we found difficult as we saw individuals facing this first hand was the inability for families and friends to physically gather to either celebrate events such as weddings or to gather during difficult times such as the loss of loved ones. Inshallah, as we slowly move back towards normalcy, we will value the opportunity for social interactions. The hardest part of the past year was particularly during Amurid's final days and hours when they have passed away. Pre-COVID, we would visit the hospital and meet with the Murid and their family and offer prayers. During the pandemic, however, we have not been able to meet the Murid or the family and have not been there to hold their hands and offer prayer and comfort. Our favorite moment of the past year was when Jamaat Khana reopened in August and the feeling you get when walking into Jamaat Khana, seeing our volunteers and our Jamaat with their smiling faces. Well, their smiling eyes and how everyone embraced the changes and guidelines. It really gave us a true appreciation of what we have in our Imam and our one Jamaat. You know, there have been favorite moments and some really difficult moments this past year. But one of the favorite moments has actually been to see the resilience in our Jamaat grow as time has gone on. Our favorite moments of the past year have been receiving Holy Dalika from Walana Hazri Imam, giving us comfort and guidance. On being able to connect with our Jamaat personally on several occasions. The most memorable story from the pandemic was when the Jamaat Khanas were closed after evening prayers one day. We called the Murid to make sure that they were doing okay. And there was this one Murid who was so happy. She said that she felt that she was in Jamaat Khana. A story from the pandemic that was memorable to us was going hiking in the mountains. We took advantage of beautiful weather and fresh air at Sulphur Mountain. Before this pandemic, we were limited to only seeing members of our local Jamaat. However, this pandemic allowed us an opportunity to connect and interact with Jamaati members worldwide as we form global bridges and connections. We truly experience what it means to be one Jamaat. So something from the pandemic that has been memorable for us has been the Friday Night Reflections. It's been amazing to see how when Jamaat Khanas closed and we were we lost that connection with each other. It was Friday Night Reflections that actually helped us to stay connected and remind us of the large community that we have that is able to support us during such a challenging time. The other thing that's been amazing about Friday Night Reflections is learning about all of the history, um, recognizing all of the, the Marids, our brothers and sisters that play amazing roles in society right from journalists to business people to medical professionals. The most memorable experience for us in the past year was going for long walks with our families and watching Friday Night Reflections. The most memorable story during the pandemic has been the work of our volunteers. They have been a real pillar 
for our Jamaat and a true example of the giving one's time for the benefit of others. But all our volunteers, whether they are in Jamaat Kana, at a funeral, or at a wedding, or any other event, they are keeping our Jamaat safe, but at the same time serving the Jamaat with such calmness and treating everyone with dignity and respect. My favorite celebratory meal is beef biryani, chicken samosas, montar, and of course, without a doubt, there has to be sherbet during any celebration. Mine, on the other hand, is I like chicken biryani, vegetable samosas, um, what else, sev, and we have to have some papar or farfar to go with that. And then of course, chai with marble cake. We celebrate Nowruz by visiting our families and friends. And enjoying each other's company in good meals. Unfortunately, this year we are not able to do so because of pandemic. So we will have a virtual celebration. Our favorite celebration meal is... Biryani. Samosa. And, and af mewa. What am I most looking forward to? That's easy. I'm looking forward to Jamaat Khanna's reopening. And I'm looking forward to our lives coming back to normal, but inshallah with more wisdom and with more thought and reflection so that our daily activities align much better with our priorities. With the acceleration of the vaccination process, we are looking forward to the reopening of all our Jamaat Khanas and inshallah in large gathering. We are looking forward to catch up and celebrate with all of you the missing festivities. This past year has been a challenging one, but it has also presented a lot of opportunities for most of us. We are here for you. We are thinking and praying for you. We appreciate all the love and affection you have for us. We, we are, are eagerly waiting, waiting to, to see you in Jamaat Khanas soon. Nawroz Mubarak. What we wish to say to our Jamaat is all pandemics come to an end and so will this one. With our Imam's guidance, we have hope and optimism and we will inshallah see you again soon. Have faith, stay strong, stay positive and stay safe. We would like to wish the Jamaat Nambaraz Mubarak. We love you. We miss you. Inshallah, we will see you soon. Nous avons hâte de vous retrouver et que vous demeurez dans nos pensées et prières au quotidien. In the meantime, please stay safe and optimistic. Inshallah, with Mullah's grace, everything will soon be back to normal. Nambaraz Mubarak. Mubarak. We want the Jamaat to know that we will never forget those who are no longer with us and we are here for the Jamaat. We are really looking forward to seeing you and are confident that with the Imam as our beacon of light, we will go further as a Jamaat than ever before. But for now, we're almost there, but we still need to be on guard and continue following guidelines. We miss you. We're constantly praying for you and wishing you a sincere, love-filled Nabros Mubarak. Let us also pray for our Mushkil Hassan, for peace, prosperity, and a return to normalcy. Let us pray for those that are living in difficulty and for those who are facing hardship. Let us also remember that Navroz is an opportunity for us to think about the future that we seek and may we also renew our commitment to helping those around us who need our support. Let us remain true to our faith and to staying on Sirat al-Mustaqim. On behalf of all the Mukhi Kamne Sahibs and Mukhyani Kamne Sahibas and all institutional leaders across the country, we wish every member of the Canadian Jamaat Navroz Mubarak. Thank you so much to all of our Mukhi Kamriyas and Mukhyani Kamriyanis for joining us. It's absolutely heartwarming to see you on screen. And I really hope that we'll all be able to see you in person very, very soon. Once again, Navroz Mubarak to all of you. 
Thanks, Medina, and thank you to our Mukhi Karmias, Mukhani Karmanis, for your kind words. It was just so nice to hear from you during this celebratory occasion of Navroz. We hope to see you all very shortly. You know, we're going to end Friday Night Reflections as we always do with some musical expressions. Our first one is called New Perfume, which immerses us in a meadow of flowers that are blooming on Navroz Day. And our second piece is called Navroz 1400. This one is with words originally written by Pierre Nasser Kusro and celebrates the arrival of Navroz. Both of these pieces feature over 20 artists, singers, musicians, and dancers all across Canada. We end tonight with Tere Nur Se Mola. With lyrics in both Urdu and Farsi, this piece describes the colors and fragrances associated with spring and the occasion of Navroz. Thank you for joining us this week. My name is Zain Velji, Navroz Mubarak, and Yali Madan.
खुशबू इमामत की फैली महका है सारा जहां 